Congressman Ferencall, thank you very much for inviting us into your office here today in, uh, in Washington, D.C. We appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. You sit on the, the House Oversight Committee, and this morning there was supposed to be a hearing about Operation Fast and Furious, and I guess that got delayed till next week because the IG's report is not out yet. They say there are technical errors in it that they're uh, trying to correct. I wonder if they're just not trying to uh, stall it beyond uh, the time we uh, have before the election. And this IG is part of the executive branch. Right. right. It's their internal investigator that's looking mm -hmm. at it. It's the fox that's guarding the in-house. Okay. What's going on with that? I know your committee voted to hold uh, Attorney General Holder in contempt of Congress and the House voters in favor of that. Where do we stand on moving forward on this issue? All right, well, we, we actually voted two different contempts. We voted criminal contempt and we voted civil contempt. The criminal contempt gets referred to the Justice Department, which Eric Holder controls to prosecute. Needless to say, not a lot of action on that. But what we've done in approving civil contempt is authorized the committee to hire lawyers to go into federal court and, uh, and have him held in contempt civilly. And the lawyers are working on that. Quite frankly, I would have expected to see more action out of that now. But you know as well as I do, once it gets in, in the hand of the lawyers, it moves at a snail's pace. Mm -hmm. It really is amazing. You know, of course, the Obama administration, when they first came into office, set a political statement out saying that, that uh, guns were flowing freely into Mexico from the United States and we needed to do something about that. And then here they started this whole process of the, the Fast and Furious gun running or a gun walking project, if you will, to uh, prove out their own theory. And I mean, it, it really and kind of is a self-fulfilling prophecy and you know, an attempt to demonize the firearm industry, who actually brought this problem to the attention of uh, ATF. Right. And ATF, in Fast and Furious, basically ordered them to continue to sell these guns to people they knew were taking them to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And it makes absolutely no sense. It was run Anybody who's watched a cop show on TV knows how poorly it would run. I, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about why would you want to do this, and the only explanation that I've been able to come up with, of course I'm open to others, is you go back to the Obama administration saying, don't let a good crisis go to waste. The next step beyond that is, why not create a crisis? And what you've seen happen as a result of uh, of Fast and Furious is a regulation, not a law, but a regulation passed by the administration that says if you're in a border state uh, and you purchase multiple weapons, mm -hmm. that gets reported. And that only happens in border states. Right. It's a violation of the Second Amendment, it was not a law passed by Congress, it was something that was done administratively. And I think that's indicative of what their intent was in Fast and Furious. It's the best theory I've got. Well, this administration certainly doesn't have much respect for the Second Amendment or the Fourteenth Amendment with equal protection, and Texas has certainly suffered as a result of that. Now, you're the congressman from Corpus Christi area in South Texas, and uh, I understand you're working on a bill now with, because of the Obama's admi administration's um, illegal orders of, against drilling in the Gulf of Mexico, now the platforms are moving out at a very rapid pace. Yeah, what's happened is as a result of the BP oil spill, a knee-jerk reaction was that the federal government has ordered oil companies to pull out non-producing oil rigs. Mm -hmm. Now, I think they think that you know, if a hurricane blows a rig over, a ship runs into it, there's going to be another oil spill. That's nonsense. We Texans know that when in oil and gas drilling operations, the well is plugged well beneath the floor of the ocean, and these structures are just standing there. And what they've become is artificial reefs. It's where if you're a Gulf fisherman, you fish the rigs. If you're a diver, you dive the rigs. Even the exhibit in Corpus Christi at the Texas State Aquarium is based on the ecosystem that develops around a rig. But the government has ordered them to pull these things out willy-nilly. They're going in with explosives to take them out, killing all the fish that are there and destroying the habitat. We've got a bill that says, hey, let's stop doing this for two years, give the experts at the Heart Research Center, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, the oil companies, the fishermen, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and all the various interest groups, time to come together and come up with a solution to where we can keep these for fishermen and divers and the economic value that they bring to uh, the Texas coast. And it's not just economic as well, it's also environmental. It creates a beautiful environment for, for the creatures in the ocean. But we've got, uh, we've got conservation groups that are supporting us, and we're actually starting to get some environmental groups uh, 
behind us. You know, once we can get them over their irrational hatred of the oil companies, they realize that this is a great habitat for, uh, for wildlife. Now, Aransas County, which is part of your district, has it's had part a of the district after the election. After the election. Right now, I represent Corpus Christi to Brownsville. Mm -hmm. In redistricting, I go up the coast, and Corpus Christi becomes the southernmost part of the district as opposed to the northernmost. Okay, and that's actually the area that I grew up in, in, in Rockport. Um, they've had a problem since uh, the last hurricane came through. It closed the pass and, and Cedar Bayou, the, and right. Cedar Bayou Pass, and the crabs is affecting crabs in there, which affects the the, the booming crane population. And takes their food away. And so I understand that they're working on some issues and you're supporting that. I'm, I'm willing to help them however I can. They're doing a real good job uh, doing it with, without federal money. If we can do that, that's, a, that's better. If there's, a, you know, if there's a grant program or something out there that uh, can be retasked to that, it's something worth looking at. But obviously, the big theme here, despite some of the local needs and Every congressman has local needs. Mm -hmm. We've got to keep our eye on the big picture, and that is that the government is spending way, mo way more money than we're bringing in. So until we can get the economy turned around and get those revenues up through economic growth, we've got to tighten our belt and uh, you know, look for ways to do things without spending federal money. Mm -hmm. And since your district runs down to the valley, I guess that leads into the obvious question about the, the situation along the, the Mexican border with the United States and Texas. And uh, clearly that area is out of control. Uh, Congressman Poe has a bill to uh, authorize the use of National Guard troops under the control of the governors, but paid for by the federal government. Are you working on any issues related to, to border security? Yeah, there, there are several things that need to be done. We, we are seeing some in, increasing violence coming over, and you know, the drug problem is just terrible. I, I have a couple of ways that I think we need to uh, address that. And, the, the, the first one is we've got to look at the, getting our immigration system under control. And then, once we've got a good immigration system, we can change the rules of engagement for the Border Patrol where they can actually stop uh, folks coming. You know, right now there's a reluctance to be real aggressive with the Border Patrol for fear that it's an economic refugee. You know, that's a politically correct term for a, a illegal alien, somebody coming over here for work. If we can create a reasonable system uh, to deal with that, uh, then we know everybody coming over is a really bad guy and a drug dealer mm -hmm. and, uh, or somebody who means harm to this country. We can change the rules of engagement. So there's a lot that can be done there. But I agree with Congressman Poe and uh, a lot of people uh, down there that one of the possible solutions and probably the best solution is more boots on the ground. But again, that's, uh, that, that, that's expensive. If we, right. can, if we can solve it with some policy changes without uh, spending some money, mm -hmm. it's probably a better solution. Well, we have a lot of equipment coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, and a lot of that equipment, the drones and, and some of the vehicles could be utilized by both the Border Patrol and the local sheriffs. Yeah, there, there are some great uh, initiatives underway to get some of that, uh, or some of those assets retasked. And again, it goes with changing the rules of engagement. If we can get some of these UAVs flying over the border, mm -hmm. spotting people as they're coming, and then get some of these helicopters to fly the Border Patrol agents in to stop them as they're trekking through the ranches or through Big Bend, uh, that, that's certainly uh, makes a way to stop it. Make, make, makes it yeah. It's a force multiplier. Exactly. But, you know, it's, again, you get with you know, an Apache helicopter coming down on a, you know, a migrant farm worker, even though they are illegal, mm -hmm. is very difficult politically, mm -hmm. especially for the Democrats, to, uh, to stomach. So, uh, so uh, some sort of guest worker program uh, especially for agricultural workers in Texas, I think needs to be a, a piece of that. Well, you know, the Republican Party of Texas just passed a plank in its platform this year calling for a guest worker program, and we would certainly like to see Congress take action on that. Um, you know, your district is a no, very absolutely. agricultural district, and uh, everybody thinks this is about cheap. And, and not my district, it's the people's district that I'm honored to represent. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine okay. with congressmen who call it their district. It's not their district, they don't own it, it's the people's district. Mm -hmm. So um, people have a misconception that farmers or construction companies are looking for cheap labor, but really they're looking for labor because they're, while we have a high unemployment rate, we also have a labor shortage at the same time when it comes to manual labor. There, you know, there are a lot of people who, uh, who say that, that I don't think would be willing to come work out in the Texas hot sun uh, uh, for 
I challenge anybody who says that, come down for a month and, uh, <laughs> and, and see if you want to keep that job. And you know, that's really, with the oil boom we've got in mm -hmm. Texas, mm -hmm. uh, in Victoria, I was talking to the EDC folks, they're at about 6% unemployment nominally, but they say anybody who's willing to work and can pass a drug test can get a job in Victoria. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see signs at Dairy Queen saying, you know, $12, $18 an hour to work at Dairy Queen. Right. Yeah, I, we saw Chick-fil-A, interestingly enough, when all of that was going on, we talked to some of them. They're paying anywhere from $12 to $20 an hour for people, and they're still having to hire immigrant labor because they can't get enough Americans to do the job. Congressman, we thank you very much for your time this morning. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to the readers of Texas GOP Vote today? Well, I just appreciate y'all taking an interest in what's going on here in Washington and, uh, and being a voice for our conservative values. Well, thank you for serving the people of South Texas and all of our country. We greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.